Welcome to the Shield Your Business from Chaos podcast, where there's no building, no people, no third party suppliers, and no systems all combined to create Chaos the Dragon, which is battled by King Phoenix and his shield. Hi, welcome to the KISS BCP podcast. I'm your host, Roswita Fur. Like and subscribe to the KISS BCP podcast wherever you listen or watch. And now, on with the show. Hi, welcome to the KISS BCP podcast. I'm your host, Roswita Fur. Thanks for joining us today and Happy New Year. Today, we're going to be talking about New Year's resolutions, specifically writing your business continuity plan, and more specifically, a particular aspect of that, which our guest, Daniel Chup of Logix Federal Credit Union, is going to be helping me with. Daniel's been a guest before, and we're very, very happy to have you back today. Before we get started, just a reminder to like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you, Daniel, for joining us. Um, so Daniel uh, has been at Logix Federal Credit Union now for 10 years and overall has been in the business continuity field for about 15 years. Daniel, would you share a little bit more about your background for our guests? Thank you very much, Rosalita, for this very warm welcome and introduction. Uh, I'm more than happy to uh, not only be in this podcast, but talk business continuity here. Uh, plus, you know, it's a new year. Uh, uh, obviously, New Year's resolutions are on top of mind, of course. But let's start with myself. Um, I am the uh, Senior Vice President of Enterprise Risk Management here at Logix. I've uh, been in this uh, position for uh, probably about six uh, years. And um, I oversee uh, various aspects, of course, of the business. And those include... Um, everything risk mitigation. Risk mitigation, mm -hmm. such as fraud risk management, such as collections activities, such as our insurance program, and mm -hmm. obviously, last but not least, uh, business continuity as well. Um, it's uh, an area that is near and dear to my heart because understanding your business uh, means that uh, you also have to understand what could go wrong. Uh, that is uh, the auditor. Uh, I came up <laughs> as an auditor, and the first question that we typically ask when we have new clients or we have a new year we had to audit was, you know, what if, you know, what could go wrong? Uh, you know, show me what's being swept under the, the rug, and we need to see, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, that is where I'm coming from, and that's why uh, BCP is, is a passion of mine. So glad to have you as a guest again. Really appreciate your time today. So um, Daniel and I were chatting beforehand about what aspect of this we wanted to discuss since our theme is getting your plan written. And Daniel was inspired to talk about business impact analysis, the often overlooked and sometimes feels overwhelming challenge of identifying all your critical processes and what you need to support those in the event of a disruption. So I think that's a very fitting topic for our monthly theme. Um, Daniel, you were just sharing with me about your experience um, just this past fall of doing a business impact or an updated in, in business impact analysis. Would you go ahead and like to tell us about that a bit? Of course. The reason why I bring business impact analysis up, it's one of these oftentimes considered to be an exercise or a check the box duty that you have to go through on a regular basis, every two years, every three years. And many people don't really see much value in it. In my view, it's the foundation. It's what really drives whatever you do afterwards, whatever you start putting on that uh, business continuity plan. The business impact analysis is in a way a bit of an assessment of where you are and what I mentioned earlier that what could go wrong piece in there. Yes. Uh, in 2023, the timing was pretty good in a way. Uh, we went through the business impact analysis update for the entire enterprise and uh, very near uh, to, to, uh, to that. Um, we also did the uh, update of our risk assessments. Mm -hmm. uh, we have quite a few risk assessments here at Logix that uh, require 
very regular updates. Uh, I'm talking like either annual or even uh, uh, more frequent than that. Mm -hmm. And doing one and the other so close uh, time-wise had the benefit of people being in the mindset of understanding what uh, they should be looking for. Mm -hmm. um, that what if question is, is not always easy to answer, but oftentimes when we start with the worst case scenario and then you work your way through the, well, is that even possible in our environment? Mm -hmm. What's the likelihood that this is possible? And what do we have in place to prevent it? Then you already assess your risk. And on top of that, you have already also updated your business impact analysis because you looked at the most uh, actual and most recent uh, possibilities of risk. Mm -hmm. uh, so to me, that is, again, the foundation, a foundation that uh, starts, in my view, every uh, BCP uh, framework mm -hmm. and a foundation that has to be updated uh, each time there is a significant change uh, in the environment. Um, that could be obviously uh, moving uh, location, for instance. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned two years ago, we, we uh, finalized our new headquarters, which is in a new environment. Um, we have new threats that surround the headquarter. And um, I'm sure that most of you are very familiar with these threats. These threats could be fire, these threats could mm -hmm. be wind events, but more lately, um, power outages have become a big, big issue. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, you know, be nimble about uh, the business impact analysis. Be, um, you know, uh, appreciative of the fact that even a foundation can be changed. Um, and the processes that come out of the uh, business impact analysis will drive your activities, the way you address them, the controls that you have in place. You know, we're, we're obviously on the same page. And I think, you know, virtually every business, business continuity practitioner out there um, is, understands the value of a BIA. It's getting the company to recognize the value um, because what, in my experience, oftentimes in speaking with different people at different levels at a company, um, you'll hear, especially from IT, oh, well, we know what's important. Um, but it's the details, the devil's always in the details, right? So it's the details that come out of that BIA that can make the difference between a smooth recovery and a catastrophic one. Um, do you have anything to add to, to that? Absolutely. I mean, ultimately, this is all about business resilience. And let's not forget that we just came out of a pandemic. Some say that uh, it's not over yet. And I would probably agree that mm -hmm. we've seen more cases lately again. But overall, I guess we went back to somewhat a new normal. That new normal has dramatically changed. It has. We work from home, at least partially. Uh, we obviously uh, have seen inflation happening uh, and we've seen the economy taken, taken a nosedive. Mm -hmm. And all these factors, again, are a new norm that will impact your uh, business continuity planning. The cost of replacement in case of a disaster it will be different. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the risk of losing power is maybe uh, not centered on your headquarters building anymore, but it's, it can happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. So if your workforce is decentralized, you have to have some remediation in place, uh, even if your workforce works 20 miles from your headquarters. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So you have to have an understanding of where your workforce typically lives and, and where, you know, uh, major power outages can happen. Um, then um, in our case here in California, you know, wildfires are a big deal, but the often much bigger deal is the impact of wildfires on traffic. Mm -hmm. and how you can get from and to certain locations and how this impacts uh, certain processes that may uh, have to be done in a specific location. In a specific location, that's an excellent point. So um, in thinking about New Year's resolutions and business impact analysis for 
people who might be listening who are either doing their first business impact analysis or who are doing updates um, either for the first time or as part of a regular cycle. Um, what would you suggest or so, sort of the top three tips in, in thinking of this as a New Year's resolution, we're going to do our BIA, we're going to update our BIA. What are sort of the top three things that float to float up for you in terms of importance or perspective about that process? Of course, uh, thank you. The top word that comes to mind is honesty. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that, you have to be very honest with yourself and with each other about what is um, the uh, level of preparation that we have for uh, yeah. certain type of events. I mean, I hear often, oh yeah, we got that down. You know, we have we have a little generator, you know, that's gonna take care of that. Or, uh, you know, we can all work from home. Uh, of course, yeah. Um, so these are relatively easy answers, but if you start looking into the actual logistics and the actual, does it really happen that way? Then you'll start seeing that, oh wait, but you know, in order to work from home, uh, I have to make sure that everybody first of all, has the equipment and second, takes yeah. the equipment home every day. Um, and uh, the generator, well, is a general, generator really going to power the workstations that I need in, in case of a, a disaster? I'm so, that, so glad. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. So, so that's the, the first and, and, and foremost uh, uh, important uh, thing that I, that I would suggest to everybody, just be honest and, and really... I'm so glad you mentioned that um, because yeah, an honest self-assessment and getting other people to let go of ego in fear of if 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 it doesn't already look like we have things under control, is it going to reflect badly on me, on my department, on the documentation we have? That can be really difficult to overcome, especially in an organization um, where the business continuity planning process might not be terribly mature and people are still apprehensive about it. So I'm so glad you led with that because I think that's crucial and perhaps not often recognized as being the most important thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm really glad you mentioned that. So yeah. what, what would sort of be next on your list for our audience? So uh, the other two uh, very important pieces of that, if you're relatively new, to uh, the process of performing a business impact analysis, either ask a pro or ask for help. Um, if you have a bit of a network, ask your peers um, if they could share uh, at least the concept, if not the template of mm -hmm. uh, doing a business impact analysis. Um, you could do it right and you can do it wrong. And uh, if you start wrong, then obviously it's, it's not gonna produce the results that you'd like. Yeah. Therefore, uh, I would suggest, um, again, get a little bit of education, uh, ask, ask your peers, ask around, ask a pro, um, and, and then uh, you know, start, start with the right uh, type of, of, uh, of basis, the right mm -hmm. type of template. And definitely Excellent that. advice. And then third, um, go deep. Go deep, uh, meaning that you don't just scratch the surface by talking to executives. Um, no, go deep in terms of go to the specialist. Go to the mm -hmm. people ultimately performing tasks. They will know what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And they will also give you that level of honesty that I mentioned earlier. Also great, great advice. I would add to that last one, one caveat um, is that if your business impact analysis includes the financial impact, which it should, going to the specialists for the financial impact is not necessarily the place to get that information because they often don't have it because they're at a level of detail where they don't see the financial picture of the company. Um, I've seen that mistake happen multiple times where the responsibility for completing the BIA for a process or a department was pushed down so far that the people answering really only had a picture for their little area and could not aggregate information in a way that you could roll it back up again. So there's gotta be multiple levels involved 
in different parts of the BIA, but I absolutely concur what with what you're saying regarding going to the specialists exactly. for that process information. Yeah, that's right. very helpful. So um, one eye opener in last year's exercise was sometimes you think of a risk one way and then you ask somebody else and that will bring a whole new perspective on the same risk that you may not mm -hmm. have thought about. So picture this, you have a server room, just mm -hmm. a bunch of servers in a room. Uh, there is a fire erupting somewhere around the building. The servers are safe, you think, right? Because they're protected in a way by this, you know, uh, uh, safe location that they're, they're put in. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The sprinklers will probably go on. Mm -hmm. And they will completely put that server room underwater. Well, IT equipment and water do not really <laughs> like each other. So I guess what's going to happen? These servers will probably still be damaged. Yeah. And, you know, that's the things that maybe somebody from the IT will not immediately think about. They will say, well, our servers are protected. We have, you know... We are foolproof. We have, you know, uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, safe environment. We have uh, firewalls, obviously, that prevent any detection and intrusion. And, and however, then here comes, you know, somebody from, say, the facilities area or somebody yeah. from safety and security and says, well, but what about these sprinklers? They, they, will, they will go on. So that's just a, a very small example of looking at the same risk uh, from different angles mm -hmm. and of yeah all of a sudden realizing, hey, there, there's more to it. But I absolutely agree. Ultimately, uh, the, uh, the quantification will come from the experts in the finance area and oftentimes mm -hmm. these are the, the CFOs and the, uh, and the uh, controllers and, and the banks. Good, thank you so much. That was, those three tips I think will be very helpful. Um, especially if it's sort of your first time doing this. And to double down on our theme for the month, if you need to do your business impact analysis, do not put it off, get it started now. Um, we're only a little way into January, so there's still plenty of time to make significant progress. Um, and there's resources everywhere that can help you, including Kingsbridge Business Continuity. So I thank you very much for your time today, Daniel. Um, I've, I always enjoy speaking with you, and this was definitely no exception. Uh, so I appreciate your time. Thank you very and much. Thank you for joining us today. We drop a new episode every two weeks and um, hope you enjoyed and found this interesting. Look forward to speaking with you next time. Thanks and have a great day.